Hi, I'm Dave Ortega, and welcome to another episode of Some Arts. And I'm here with Ken from Honk Festival. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. So you must be gearing up for this very exciting Honk Festival. Uh, you're in the thick of it, gathering bands, gathering all sorts of other people to Somerville. Yep. Um, what is Honk for the uninitiated? There are people who don't know. There are people who don't know. There's like one or, one or two. One or two. But well, we're talking to you. <laughs> uh, Honk is a festival of activist street bands. Uh, we have gathered now, this will be our 12th year, and it's a uh, uh, basically a, a conference and a uh, conference and uh, public performance and uh, all the things that go with that of uh, this year about 28 bands coming from all over the world. Wow. Uh, these are bands for the most part that perform uh, to make a positive change in the world. Uh, that's their role in their communities. Um, they are not bands mostly who are looking to get famous or looking to make money. They're, they're community-based bands. And uh, there's a festival that was started uh, about 12 years ago by members of the Second Line Social Aid and Pleasure Society Brass Band. That's a Somerville-based group that I'm also a member of. Um, and it was, and that was a band that was created for those reasons and still exists for those reasons. Uh, it was, uh, thought at that time that maybe there are other bands around the world or around the country uh, that do the same kind of thing. So the purpose of the festival was one, to give an opportunity for these bands to get together mm -hmm. and talk to each other, find out what they do, wh why they do it, how they do it, what problems they encounter, how they overcome those problems. And second, to provide an opportunity for the public to come in and uh, uh, basically have a great time. <laughs> So uh, it's grown from the original 12 bands in the first year. And now uh, it's, it's up to a little less than 30 bands. Wow. Uh, there are a million details that uh, our volunteer committee has to deal with. Uh, we're, we're a group of about 10 or 11 people. I lost track. <laughs> uh, and we're non-hierarchical, the uh, organizing committee. We're all volunteers. Um, and we just all, we, we make decisions as a group. We uh, take care of issues, take care of uh, the millions of details I mentioned, um, have little subcommittees that do things like house the bands, we find housing for all the bands, uh, provide food for the bands, uh, gather some of the money that we need through contributions from businesses, from individuals, through our Kickstarter, um, and uh, provide transportation. There's, there's just a lot of things that have to happen mm -hmm. and work with the city. Uh, to, to make things happen. I'm sure. Yeah. And what's the, uh, what's the furthest out that a band is, is coming from? This year we have a band coming from Brazil uh, and uh, an all-woman band uh, called uh, Le uh, Damas de Ferro. Uh, my Portuguese is not very good. <laughs> uh, and we're very excited about them coming. Um, we've had bands in the past coming from Russia, from uh, France, uh, a lot of bands from all over. Uh, so, um, and we're, uh, I, I don't know if we mentioned the, the festival is the weekend of October 6th, 7th, and 8th. Yes. Uh, Indigenous Peoples uh, Day weekend. Excellent. And do, it coincides with Oktoberfest as well in Harvard Square. It does. It happens to coincide on Sunday with mm -hmm. Oktoberfest, and we work with the Harvard Square Business Association very closely. Uh, on Saturday, we have a, a full day in Davis Square of free performances. The entire festival is free. Uh, there's nothing that costs money. Uh, so we have uh, Friday night, we have some performances in, uh, at Once Ballroom mm -hmm. and at Aeronaut uh, that we've set up of a couple of the bands, uh, sort of kickoff showcase kind of performances. Uh, also earlier on Friday, we do some outreach into the communities, do some activism events and uh, uh, active uh, actions. Um, Saturday all day, there are bands in Davis Square performing from about noon until 9 p.m. Uh, people can come. Uh, it's, it's a great scene. It's an amazing scene. I, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. And, and just, it's so great to walk around and see uh, people perform in front of the, the VFW Hall yeah, yeah. Uh, for a few minutes and then walk around and go to uh, Ten Hills Park and yeah. see another performance. Yeah. Um, 
it, it's fabulous. It's it's an amazing time, actually, and a lot of people say it's their favorite weekend of the year. Yeah. And, and uh, on Sunday, I should mention that there's a, you mentioned Oktoberfest. We work with uh, with them, the organizers of Oktoberfest, and we have a parade starting at noon from Davis Square to Harvard Square. Uh, we hope to have the mayors of both cities leading the parade and uh, almost all the bands and a lot of community organizations will be marching in the parade. Uh, it's, a, it's a great parade and if you really want the inside kind of uh, uh, feeling of the day, show up in Davis Square at about 11 when the bands are staging. Uh, and it's, it's just quite a scene, amazing scene. Some people told me years ago that it was the closest to Mardi Gras that they've ever <laughs> seen outside of New Orleans. Wow. So. Yeah, and it, it's to your credit and the organizers' credit that uh, the, the, the whole feel of the event is just so, so organic. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 you all must do so much behind the scenes stuff to make it feel that way. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that because the very first year of the festival, I wasn't on the organizing committee. I joined the second year. And I wasn't in the second line band that first year. I, had, I was in, uh, and I still am in another band of my own, the Revolutionary Snake Ensemble. And they asked me with my band to participate. And I said, sure, that sounds fun. And my impression before the festival was, man, this is kind of not really totally organized. Is it gonna <laughs> really work? And I was a little apprehensive. And my experience at the festival was, this is amazing. This was incredible. It was uh, all the little details that, you know, I was worried wouldn't work out, all worked out. Mm. And I think that's how the festival has gone. There, there are a lot of things that have to happen, but the organic nature of it, the, the fact that the people, the bands that are here are not doing it for money. You know, they're doing it because they believe in making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And they believe in, in meeting with other bands who are doing that. It's a community. Uh, and so, there's a sense of that. I think the, the public that comes out to hear the festival, to participate in the festival, uh, by just by being there, uh, get that sense. Get that sense that this isn't just a, you know, an opportunity for people to make money or uh, sell things. This is this is really a community that's gathering, and the community includes the audience uh, that come that comes to experience the festival. Uh, we should mention that we have a website. It's honkfest.org. H-O-N-K-F-E-S-T uh, dot -E org. And we're actually in the middle of a Kickstarter, which has a couple more days. I'm not sure if there'll be an opportunity to give through that when this airs, but uh, if people want to contribute to that, it's honkfest.org slash Kickstarter. It's the easiest way to get there. And what are those, uh, what are those funds uh, that if people donate, what right. does that contribute so to? We do our best to help the bands with their transportation costs. So the bands in general don't get paid, but we, we like to try to offset their expenses to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have to pay for certain things like we put up a tent uh, that is a, a place for the bands to gather in the evenings. Um, that costs a little money. Uh, we, we provide food. Uh, we have to rent some buses to get people from point A to point B. So we have, not he for, the, for the size of the festival, uh, for, for what it is, the budget is incredibly small, but there mm -hmm. are expenses and we, we need to meet them. Uh, we get, we're very grateful for some support from the City of Somerville, uh, the Somerville Arts Council, uh, from business, local businesses. We, we have uh, incredible support. We have a lot of businesses that help with uh, food, donating food uh, and food vouchers for the musicians. Uh, so we get a lot of support, but we need a little bit of money. And uh, you know, as I say, none of us on the organizing committee get paid, but uh, we have some things we have to spend money on. And you mentioned um, the learning component, like learning from other right. activist bands and other activist organizations. Right. Um, so what, what are the kinds of things that you do learn from them? Well, we have, what we've done in the past, uh, I don't know, four or five years, uh, maybe more, is we've set up a, um, it used to be a symposium on Monday, mm -hmm. the day after most of the festival in the morning. Now it's roundtable discussions, and people who attend the festival can uh, propose to lead uh, a roundtable, to can, can propose a topic. Some of the topics are how do you choose material in a band like this? Uh, the bands generally include a wide range of abilities, musical abilities, uh, from professionals to almost beginners in some cases. Mm -hmm. So 
how do you pick material? Do you do you teach material by ear? Do you use sheet music, which some people maybe aren't as comfortable with? Um, do you pick material that is specifically activist material, uh, or do you pick material that's fun? And you know, so there, there. Uh, then, how do you make decisions within the band? Uh, are you a consensus-driven band? Do you have a leader that makes decisions? Uh, uh, how do you decide what kind of events to play for? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asks you to play for something. Is it is it worthy? Is it is it something? If you get a lot of requests, as most of the bands do. How do you decide which things you're going to support? Uh, and so these are all things that there's no easy answer, but to have a discussion about how different bands approach these uh, issues. Um, uh, there are also, how do you deal with conflict within a band? You know, bands mm -hmm. of 20 or 30 people, which some of these bands have. Uh, it's, it's a lot of interrelationship. And so uh, uh, decision making, uh, that kind of thing. It's, um, there are a lot of topics that, that people are interested in uh, and we try to be responsive to what the people who are attending the festival are interested in talking about. Excellent. And what, what have you heard from the community from Somerville uh, about Honkfest? Like for me personally, yeah. it's, it's my favorite weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I look forward to it every year. Well, that's great to hear. And, and in fact, we hear that over and over. Mm. You know, it's kind of astounding to us. You know, the, the people that put together this festival are just incredibly uh, uh, thankful that the community has been so taken with this festival, as, as you have mentioned. Um, you know, we, we still need to be careful because there are things that you think everybody would like you to do. And there may be some people that they don't, they're not actually into it. You know, maybe they're not into having a band play for eight hours in a park next to their home where they have a young, maybe ill child, you know? And so we try to be sensitive to that. Maybe there's a business where having a band in front of their business, they feel like that's uh, preventing them, their customers from getting in or making it a little more difficult. So you can't make everybody happy, but we try, we take all of that feedback very seriously. Mm. And we wanna be responsive as best we can to, to every issue that comes up. But by and large, uh, the community is so supportive. The city, the businesses, the individuals uh, are, uh, they love it. They love the festival. And I think, you know, I think for some of the reasons that I mentioned, because it's unique. There are no craft vendors. Uh, there, there aren't people trying to, trying to make a buck off of you. No corporate you sponsorship. Know, no corporate sponsorship. We have, we have people who support us, businesses, but they all get, no matter what they give, they all get the same recognition on our website. No, there's not different categories. Uh, it's a very different kind of festival. And I think uh, whether people realize that, whether they even realize there's a festival of activist bands. Um, I think a lot of people do at this point. They understand what we're doing. But even if you don't, you can still come and have just an amazing time. Just because of the, I think also because Part of the concept of these bands is they're performing at street level. They're not on stage in general. Um, they, they, the members of the band are just regular members of the community. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not people who are I don't know rock stars. They're they're regular people, and the audience is engaged by dancing, clapping, getting involved uh, um, in in the music, in the performance, and and you're right there. And so, I think uh, I think it's. It's unique in a lot of ways. And, you know, it's spawned other festivals all over the world. You know, there's a festival, I'm wearing a shirt from Hog, Texas, uh, a, a festival that takes place in Austin wow. every year. There's a festival in Seattle, Honk, Honk West. Uh, there's a festival in New York, Honk New York City, Honk Providence, Pronk, they call it. Um, there's new festivals sprouting up. They call themselves Honk, and we encourage that. There's one in Rio in Brazil, there's uh, one in uh, Wollongong, Australia, huh. that I've been attending for the past three years. I'll be there in January again, uh, Honk Oz. Uh, there's a, a festival in Western Australia, uh, a Honk WA for Western Australia. And so it's an idea that has just kind of taken off, taken a life of its own. Uh, people who do these other festivals do them entirely independently of us. We, we're, you know, it's getting to the point where we feel like we need to form some kind of, uh, I don't know, 
committee of festivals so we can talk about common issues at that level mm -hmm. of the festivals and uh, come up with a common uh, mission for all of our festivals. But there's no, uh, there's no formal organization at this point. Everybody does their own thing and very much like the bands. Yeah, and that's that's the nature of of the whole festival. It really is. That's, yeah. That would draw. That's what draws people. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's fabulous. And the music, you know, we haven't talked too much about the music. The music's amazing. I mean, some of these bands coming in from from all over, from New York, from you know, from the West Coast, from uh, middle of America, from all over, mm. uh, are just astounding. You know, and to me, I happen to be a professional musician. I, I do this for a living, but. Um, to think about bands where they're community-based and the, the membership in the bands often is, uh, includes, as I said, members who aren't professional musicians who maybe uh, are at a, uh, not at as, at, as advanced a level uh, musically. My first impression or my first uh, assumption might be that the music level might suffer, but it doesn't. You know, this is what astounds me, that uh, the bands are just incredible. They sound great, and they. I think part of that is because of uh, their goal, their purpose. You know, people feel really strongly about what they're doing, and I think the emotional uh, motivation really makes for better music. <laughs> that that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and I look forward to um, Friday and Saturday and seeing bands scattered all around Somerville and the parade on Sunday. Yeah. And, I encourage everybody uh, in the entire Boston Metro, New England region to come out to Somerville uh, for Honk Weekend, which is uh, October 6th, 7th, and 8th, yes. Uh, and go to the website, honkfest.org. Honkfest.org, yeah, please do. And we hope to see you all out there. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be out there having a good time along with all, all of you. Well, thank you for coming in, Ken. Thank it was a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, thank you. And now for some more events happening in October. Our Differences Are Superpowers, a discussion and workshop for teens, takes place Friday, October 13th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. at the Central Library, 79 Highland Ave. Join the library for a discussion and workshop on El Defo, this year's Somerville Reads book. Participants will each identify their own superpower and pledge to do one heroic act using it and then make superhero capes. A mini book on the heroic or even kind acts that have been performed will be made. Refreshments will be served. This event is brought to you by Teen Empowerment and the Somerville Public Library. There are home movie day events around the world and they provide the opportunity for individuals and families to see and share their own home movies with an audience of their community and to see their neighbors in turn. It's a chance to discover why to care about these films and to learn how to best care for them. So bring your 8mm, Super 8mm, 16mm, and VHS tapes to Somerville Media Center on Saturday, October 14th, and professionals will screen them for you and the community. Laugh, cry, and revel in nostalgia and amateur filmmaking. Film drop-off and registration is from noon to 1, and the screening is from 1 to 5. Yay, home movies! Sunday, October 15th, from 1.30 to 4 p.m., return to the Central Library for the Somerville Reads finale, which is an El Defo living room party. Step into El Defo author Cece Bell's childhood living room for an El Defo themed party. Snack on popsicles, share your warm fuzzies and comics, and win prizes, talk about your own superpowers, and take a photo in the El Defo photo booth. Join the library for a final celebration of Somerville Reads 2017 and El Defo. Books and Brews will take place Tuesday, October 17th at 6 p.m. at the Aeronaut Brewing Company at 14 Tyler Street. The Somerville Public Library is excited to be partnering with Aeronaut to host an off-site social book club for readers in their 20s, 30s, and for the young at heart. This month's book will be The Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel. Copies are available through the library catalog found at somervillepubliclibrary.org. Those who have not had the time to finish the book are still welcome. Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices 
that bring awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. On Friday, October 20th, from 3 to 7 p.m., Somerville Media Center will open up our space and offer many fun-filled activities for the general public to learn more about Somerville's premier media center. We'll have an outdoor pop-up radio booth and more. Please come on by, say hello, share why you support free speech, and just come learn about us. We want to acknowledge the city of Somerville for passing a resolution um, acknowledging and proclaiming October 20th as Community Media Day. Go Somerville! Monster Mashup is Sunday, October 22nd from 2 to 6 p.m., rain date, the 29th, on Somerville Ave between Union Square and Spring Street. It is the free final installment of the city's Summer Streets Festivals featuring live music, family-friendly activities, food, and more. Activities along Somerville Ave will include a costume parade led by the School of Honk, an all-ages costume content starting at 3.30 p.m. at Conway Park, an Oktoberfest beer garden, live music on three stages, Ghosts of Somerville at the Milk Row Cemetery with Somerville Historic Preservation Commission, games and buzz with uh, games with Buzz Roar Interactive, a stilting workshop, parkour, hockey, football, preschool games, and more, artisan and crafts, and a flea market, a roller skating shimmy, storytelling project with Somerville Media Center in the city of Somerville, martial arts performances, face painting, and henna painting, and a climbing wall, as well as community vendors. That's a lot. As always, things change. So if you're interested in any one of these events, check out the event producer's website for the most current info. We will see you next month. That's it for October for Some Arts. For Somerville Media Center, I'm Dave Ortega. I am always come back. story but you know every story needs some music <laughs> and who is he oh yeah he's uh, my father he's uh, my number one fan oh good job son good job more more come on come on thanks dad thanks dad you have to leave oh come on man just a little more no it's a danger here you have to leave. No, no. There, uh, take a break. It's a uh, half time now. No, it's still fight here. Just over there. Look at that. Okay. Let me see where. Okay. See you. Oh, my son! Get out on my way. We are on on the battle right now. Okay, okay. I can buy myself. I I will go by myself. Come on. 
Ada, my son. My son. Why, why? My son. Where are you, my son? You. Oh, what makes you want to call a gun to? I want to get a job for you, my monkey. die but then he leaps again oh I don't know what is going on my land it was hey it was shadow in the sky brother it's your time to die today we will be together again <laughs> who is that my land what what is what is going on? I don't understand what he what happened. Yes, I know what is going on. What he say? He said last like, brother, it's your time to die. Today we will be together again, brother. Oh my God! Did you remember the general Sumantri, brother? Yeah, Sukasrana, right? Who, who is, who is he? he d I don't see him for a long time. Of course, because he died. What? Oh my God! Why he died? His brother, the general Sumantri, killed him. What? But Sumantri is a good man. It was an accident. Yeah. But first, before Sukasrana dies, he say. I will turn on the day of your death. I am now your karma. I will help the demon kill you. That's what I said. What? What will we do? I ha we have to stop him to f fighting. Hurry, hurry, my land, hurry. Okay, come on, come on. Sigonga.